Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So today we're going to build a little remote controlled car or robot using the Arduino Uno. It's going to be a do-it-yourself style robot but I'm using some 3D printed parts but I tried to make them so that every single part can be made from wood instead. So let's take a look at the parts we're going to need. Of course we'll be using the Arduino Uno as I mentioned. We also need something to power the robot and I happen to have a two cell lithium polymer battery laying around from an old tablet so I'll be using this but you could also use some lithium ion cells instead and uh, put them in one of these battery holders these can be bought very cheaply from eBay or any component store you can also use plain old double A batteries but then I think you'll need five or six of these and uh, put them in series and if you don't have the battery holder you could even just uh, solder the positive to the negative with a little wire and do this six times and then make sure nothing shorts out and then wrap the thing with the electrical tape and you have a small battery pack just make sure not to overheat the battery because it can be damaged from that but I would recommend a rechargeable battery if you're going to keep using the robot and if you're using any lithium ion battery make sure it has the protection circuit inside or be very careful when you're charging it and discharging it. We will also need some motors and for that we'll be using these geared uh, brushed DC motors. These can also be found on eBay or AliExpress. Uh, I'll put the, the search words in the description so you can go and search for them yourself and find these ones. You can also use different ones but these kind of have the shafts to put the wheels on which is quite handy speaking of wheels I made these on the 3d printer but you can just cut these out of wood and make a circle and drill a hole in the center and then put a screw into the end of the shaft with a washer and that should be fine you just need to make sure the hole is roughly in the center I found that some bicycle inner tube fits uh, around these wheels and that will provide a little extra traction I don't really think you need it because it's not going to go super fast this robot you can also buy wheels that fit these motors but uh, they're quite big uh, and for this little robot it it's a bit overkill I think but if you want to make a bigger one you can use these wheels and you can buy them from the same place as the motors. So these motors are going to use more power than the Arduino can supply so we'll need some way of driving them. Since we need to go both uh, forwards and backwards we will need an H-bridge type driver and uh, you can also buy these very cheaply from eBay. I think they're around a dollar or something. Each of these circuit boards has two controllers so we will only need one to control the, the two motors. I think the car is going to have three wheels instead of the regular four wheels and then we will use these two to steer the thing. Then I designed and 3D printed a rear wheel so this will be in the center uh, in the rear and this can uh, spin around as the front wheels steer and this is simply made with a block that has a cylindrical hole and a bottom piece that has a matching shaft it has a slot in it for a wheel and then just a pin through it. The pin fits tightly into uh, the bracket here and the wheel is loose on the pin. You could easily make this out of wood also by drilling a hole into a block of wood and then using another block you could put a dowel pin in here and uh, sand it so it's nice and smooth. Then perhaps put some uh, silicone oil on it uh, so that it fit smoothly into this piece. Then just cut out a wheel and make uh, the hole a little bit loose like this and then just uh, use a nail to put through here. It's probably a little more fiddly to get it to work uh, using wood because the friction between the parts will probably be a little bit greater than this. I'm not even sure that this is going to work since it's uh, going to be a very light car it might be that when the car tries to turn this just slips on the ground instead of 
churning like this. But uh, time will tell. The good thing about making it ourselves is that we can always change the design later if something is not working quite the way we wanted it to. We will also need some way of controlling the robot and for that we'll be using an Android mobile phone and a Bluetooth module. These are called HC-06 or HC-05. You can also find these on eBay or AliExpress and they are about two dollars I think, so also very cheap. Then I went and laser cut a piece of acrylic which we will use as the base for the car. And of course you can just uh, use a piece of plywood and just saw it out with a saw. It doesn't have to be acrylic of course. So there's different ways of putting all this together. Since most of you probably want to reuse some of the parts later on, I think it would be the best just to stick it together with double sided foam tape. If you get the right stuff it's very sticky and uh, it will hold it easily. And you should be able to find this in your local hardware store. Okay, so let's start by putting the robot together. You can find the files for my 3D prints on my website or on Thingiverse and uh, if you're going to print them yourself uh, it might be a little different from printer to printer. You might have to file this hole a little bit to get it onto the motor. But mine happens to fit quite well. So I think we'll start by attaching the motors and I'll cut a piece of tape that can uh, cover the top here. So I try to line these up uh, as good as I can. But it's not super critical that you get it exactly right, of course. So I might have to add a screw to the rear wheel mount here, uh, but I'm going to try with tape. So you should probably measure this to get it right. So, something like that. But as you can see it seems to hold pretty well, this tape. So. I don't think I have to put any screws into it. So I have a little problem with the traction on the rear wheel, as you can see. But if I put some weight on it, it works sometimes. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if that if it's a problem then we can just change it later. Then I think we can put the battery on the bottom here with the connector away from the wheels and I won't fill this up with tape entirely because then I'll never get it off this plate again without destroying the battery in the process. If you are using the lithium ion batteries and you're using my design here I think it's a good idea to put them in the back just on top of the wheel here to get the wheel to grab the the floor a little bit easier. Then we'll put the Arduino on top, something like this. But uh, make sure that you cover these pins or use thick enough tape so that the sharp points here don't puncture the battery. These uh, lithium polymer batteries can be quite unsafe if you puncture them or damage them in any way. I'm just going to use a few pieces of leftover acrylic and then I can mount the Arduino on top of that and that will make sure that the pins are not going to poke into the battery. So I think I'm putting it off to this side here and then with the connector towards the back for easy access and then it's a little unstable so perhaps an extra piece of acrylic would be better and the same for the pins on the motor controller especially the ones on the screw terminals they're quite long and sharp 
So I'll just put a scrap piece of acrylic in there and they won't reach the battery. So I think we will be putting the motor controller to this side. And then we need the Bluetooth module and this can fit right here. So this is all the components that we're going to need. Now we just need to wire it all up. Uh, my motors already came with wires on them so I can uh, screw them into the motor controller. This terminal here controls one motor and this one controls the other one. The polarity doesn't really matter. If the motor goes the wrong way then you just swap the wires around. So, so let's just start by putting the red to the left here and the black to the right. If the leads are swapped on one of the motors, then we will have to swap them up here. So it looks like the wires are going to stay pretty much in place, but I think maybe we'll add something here later to make sure they don't go into these shafts. So we're going to need some male to female jumper wires as well. And you can also buy these from eBay, they are very cheap. Or you can just make your own using some female and some male headers. The ones that I got are way too long, so I'll just go and shorten them. Just chop off the middle part and solder them together, and then add some heat shrink. The data pins on the Bluetooth module are only rated for 3.3 volts but the Arduino is running 5 volts. So we will need to limit this current a little bit to make sure that it doesn't get damaged. The easiest way to do that is just to solder some resistors in line with the wire here. And I chose 22 kilo ohms and, uh, and that value should be fine. The high output from the Bluetooth module is going to be 3.3 volts and the Arduino will still see that as a high value so we have no problem there you don't actually need the resistor. But it doesn't do any harm either, so if somebody plugs the cables in the wrong way, you don't destroy this thing. The high signal on the Arduino is 5 volts from the TX. That goes into the RX pin of this one. But when you have the high value resistor, then the ESD protection diode in here will not burn out because it can take more than the like half a milliamp or something you're passing through this resistor. If the voltage difference was greater, then we might have a problem sending data from this one to the Arduino. But in this case, it works just fine. I've got all the wires made, so now I can plug those in. And these two are with the 22K resistors. So that's the data pins for the Bluetooth module. So I'll just be plugging this into the closest pins and then we can uh, put those numbers into the software later on. So I'll use pin 2 and 3 for the RX and TX and we need power and ground and even though the data pins are rated for 3.3 volts the module takes 5 volts uh, supply so we'll hook those up to the 5 volt rail. We need to connect the motor controller to the battery and also the VIN pin of the Arduino. So I made this little splitter cable that plugs into the battery and then we have just two wires for each, positive and negative. So this battery that I'm using has over current protection built in, but if you're using a plain lithium polymer battery, then uh, you should really add a fuse to make sure that uh, you don't destroy the battery or any other components if you should have a short somewhere. I think we can try and power this up and it looks like it's working. So the motor controller has the ground and the VCC and then it has two control pins for each motor. The control is very simple and we'll take a look at the data sheet later. But simply if you keep one pin low and then pull the other one high, the motor will go one way. If you switch it so that this one is low and this one is high, the motor will spin the other way. If both are high or both low, then the motor will stop. 
Since we want to control the speed, we want one of the pins to connect to a PWM output and the other one can connect to a regular digital output. So now this robot car is ready, we just need to load some code onto it. And we will be writing the code and testing the car in the next video. So make sure to check out part 2. So thanks for watching this video and if you liked it so far please give it the thumbs up. See ya.